morning. Good morning. My name is Larry and I'm a recovering alcoholic. Hey, Larry. Hi, Larry. A while back, the sheep came around and uh, I had a thought about a little talk that uh, our beloved pastor gave about Garden of Eden. And I thought, not just what I thought, you know, I, I want to share my thoughts on that. So I'm going to sign up. I, I just said, just you pass that thing. I don't want to talk. You know, I, <laughs> but, I, but I signed up because I, I, because I thought about that, and then I forgot that I, that I signed up until Thursday. See, Paul and sister, you're, you're giving this story all so. so, and Bob warned me. He says five minutes. So, you know, <laughs> my mind is kind of racing, but uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that inspiration, that Garden of Eden talk that Martha gave, and uh, what what that kind of means to me today. And I have a lot different perspective of the Garden of Eden than I had when I first heard that story, you know. They, they eat that apple, whatever it is, and then you turn into a monster and all that, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what is really behind that story as a mature, recovering alcoholic? Because I'm an alcoholic by birth. By birth, I'm an alcoholic. I had no understanding of what that was when I dropped out of the womb, that I was a genetic alcoholic. The third largest malady known to man that kills. The third largest. American medical profession said that. Alcoholism is the third largest killer known to man. Okay. So I come out of the womb. I don't have any idea if I'm a genetic alcoholic. It's in my DNA. You know, well, the next uh, 35 years, I can tell you my drunk a lot. And there's no doubt that I'm a genetic alcoholic. <laughs> but then I reached the doors of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I was ready. So, but anyway, about the Garden of Eden, you know, you go in there and, uh, and uh, as an alcoholic, before I knew I was an alcoholic, I went in that Garden of Eden and I went right to that, that tree, you know, the, the tree, and uh, picked up all the things off of that tree, uh, all the fruit, like, uh, you know, uh, at uh, four years old, my mom had a duck uh, sugar bowl because I, I, I'd take all the, use all the sugar, that was good. <laughs> so they had duck that on me, and then when I got to be a little older, cigarettes came into view, you know, 10 years old, I'm smoking a pack a day, and I'm stealing from everybody, and lying to everybody, and, and uh, to get cigarettes, I'm hell, I'm hooked, I'm going to take a tea freak at 10, you know, and, and a few years later, I started uh, drinking booze, because uh, that was the next uh, issue on the, on the, on the horizon, and, and uh, so I started drinking, that was good, you know, I could do a lot of things I couldn't do if I didn't drink, mm -hmm. and so I just got into that, and uh, pretty soon, well, it started off in 11 next year after reform school. That was a good, that was a, you know, we could speak. I always wanted to work in the kitchen because I could have drink lemon next year. You know, nobody else, they say, Larry, what do you want to work in the kitchen? That's the worst job in total time. I said, I mean, lemon next year. <laughs> but anyway, uh, going, going, moving on, because I only got three minutes left. Moving on, uh, you know, then I got into uh, uh, the, the opposite sex. That was good. You know, they, I always picked ones that would enable me, ones that were candidates for Al-Anon, you know, that they, they didn't know they were candidates for Al-Anon either, but that was my next move, you know. All, all women that wanted to take care of me. Man, I was good at, at, at doing that. I'd been all kinds of con, con, you know, consequences for what I did. There'd always be some, some gal come along, want to take care of me, you know. Uh, 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 Mary one at 19, she was 16, you know. And, we had four kids, and that was another story. But anyway, so that was the next thing. That I went to the Garden of Eden and picked that fruit. But then I got into recovery, and I was talking about not all this thing I can tell you about. But then I got into recovery. And I went to that Garden of Eden, and it was no longer a terrorizing place. When I went to the Garden of Eden, once I really got into recovery, it was peaceful. It was exciting. It was going to a place that was contentment, uh, no anxiety. I was honest. I went to the tree, and the other trees, and I picked out honesty, and I picked out caring, I picked out wanting to know things and learn to understand. Because I got like a third grade education, you know, as far as my vocabulary goes, because about the third grade is when I dropped out. That's when I started thinking I knew more than any of my teachers. I had a slight ego problem. <laughs> that was part of it too. So anyway, you know, um, all that took place. All that took place, and then Martha gives it. Then I come to the recovery church. I come to the recovery church. Why would I do that with, you know, I got 45 years of sobriety. Why do I still keep coming to the recovery church? I know all about that stuff. It's because this is all part of my ongoing commitment to recovery. Because I'm a genetic alcoholic and I've been given the gift of understanding and knowing that. 
Okay, so I can come here on Sunday morning, and this is part of my recovery. Saying hi to all you people and, and listening to what you got to, to say and sing. Steve's getting anxiety going on. <laughs> I know, I stand over once in a while, so I know what that's all about. So, anyway, Bob's sitting there, so I gotta go. God bless you all. Uh, go to the Garden of Eden and go there with an open mind, and, and in recovery, you're gonna have a nice time. God bless you.